oral health is impacted by whether a child or an adult is mouth breathing or not. And if we go to a dental surgery, we'll probably see a poster up in the wall sponsored by Colgate about the importance of brushing your teeth. How far does brushing teeth go in comparison to a child who is constantly mouth breathing or an adult? What do you see when you look into the, the mouths of people who are mouth breathing? Yeah, the, the breathing is a, a big one and, and you really see it in the, in the younger, younger children. So in the younger age groups, you know, probably, um, you know, six months to two, you, you see that the bad breathing really, really affects their, um, their risk of decay. Um, and so that's when you, you, you have that dried out, um, you know, whitish enamel around the, 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 the front surface of the teeth. And, you know, the, the breathing factor really isn't one that we've considered very well in, in dental decay. And, and, you know, when you look at the um, immunological, you know, pr protective factors in saliva, we know by definition that if they're breathing through the mouth, they're going to be reducing that, that protective factor. And then you put the extra challenges like, you know, things like poor, so poor breathers or poor sleepers. And so this is a really unfortunate thing of seeing a lot of as exhausted parents that are feeding their kids, breastfeeding through the night. And then they're coming in and, and their, um, their child has got a, a mouthful of cavities and they're a mouth breather. And it's just, it, it's a really sad, um, it, it's a really sad presentation because, you know, they feel hopes they've been doing their best, but then you've got this poor child that has to go into hospital, have these teeth pulled out. And, you know, it really comes down to, um, it's a hard thing, you know, because you've got to guide the child early and you also have to make sure that the, the child has this sufficient immunological factors, which goes back to the vitamin, sufficient vitamin D. So um, in Ireland, especially where you're at really high risk of vitamin D deficiency, a population at high risk of vitamin D deficiency, we know that, for instance, that um, in vitamin D deficiency during pregnancy will, will increase early childhood caries as well. So that's been shown in studies. So when when you have these vitamin D deficient kids that are mouth breathing, that are, um, you know, toothbrushing really comes last in that sense, you know, plaque, plaque control really does, you know, it, it does have, play a role, but if kid is vitamin D deficient and they're, and they're breathing incorrect, they're not. And the other factor is sleeping when they don't sleep well, they don't get the melatonin, um, repriming the endocrine system to mineralize the, the skeletal system. You've just got a, a recipe for, for decay and breathing really sits right in the middle of it. Um, you know, in the presentation, it's really easy to identify too. If you see that, you know, in, in our clinic, we, you know, we're looking at the vitamin D deficiency. We're looking at their sleep. We're looking at, you know, their cranial facial growth so that we can try to get this working in the correct way. And, and it's not easy. It takes time. You know, a palate takes six months to grow at least. And then you have to teach a child how to put the tongue up to the roof of the mouth and they're sick of it by then you have to keep going and trying to, to persist so that they do it at night and it's just innate. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to reprogram. But it's giving these kids and adults skills for the rest of their life.